you're gonna have to pull the trigger. I think it's time to blow this scene, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. The Rhino 50DS, one of the most iconic revolvers out there, and dare I say, one of my own personal favorite handguns. This thing is the de facto sci-fi revolver. You'll find this thing on battlefields all across the near and distant future, or at least designs inspired by it. Now the Rhino is not to be confused with its equally popular cousin, the Matiba Auto Revolver, which looks visually similar and was actually co-designed by the creator of the Rhino, but is actually a completely different system. Now the Kiapa Rhino isn't one of my favorite handguns just because it looks cool. Really, this is an elegant design for a more civilized age. Despite its beefy profile, the real one is made of an aluminum variant, which means it's relatively light for its size. The cutouts here above the barrel show an active effort to reduce weight and help with heat dissipation. It uses a hexagonal cylinder instead of a round one to slim down on its profile and make it easier to wear inside of a concealed holster. And most notably, unlike a standard pattern revolver like my Marushan Super Blackhawk, the Rhino's barrel is in line with the bottom cylinder. Now, on the real one, this helps to mitigate muzzle flip by putting the recoil behind the user's wrist instead of above it. The Rhino was released by Black Ops Manufacture and is officially licensed by Kiapa. It's a CO2 double action airsoft revolver that will run you about $160. Now, externally, it's a very robust design. Initial impressions show very little wobble and a high attention to detail on the externals. The only initial disparity that I noticed is that this gap here is a bit more pronounced on this one and there's an additional retaining pin. Underneath the barrel here you have a 5 slot Picatinny rail for mounting accessories. A nice wide trigger guard accommodates a nice wide trigger. Just look at that thing. The trigger cycles the replica's hexagonal cylinder which is ejected by pressing down lightly on this lever. It swings out easily on its machined arm, revealing six rubber-tipped shell casings. The replica does have an adjustable hop-up, which can be adjusted by twisting this barrel component with an included tool. Twisting to the right adds hop, twisting to the left removes it. Up top you have an adjustable rear sight and a fixed front sight. The hammer here is actually a false hammer, or linkage handle, which cocks the internal hammer. That's a cool carryover from the real steel. The Rhino safety is located right behind the hammer and it locks the trigger and hammer in place. The plastic grips have a wood walnut finish with a texture that's true to the original, but they are probably my biggest critique of this replica. I will say they did survive a drop on concrete while I was reviewing it, but I really would not want to break these. They would kind of brick the whole thing. Like most CO2 revolvers, the left side of the grip pops off to reveal the CO2 chamber there. Like most CO2 revolvers, it has a built-in hex key on the left grip as well that functions as your charging tool. Line everything up before reassembling, and you're ready to fire. The 
the Rhino's features don't count for much on the airsoft field. Barrel configuration doesn't mitigate recoil because, of course, there's nothing to mitigate here. The weight-saving barrel cutouts and cylinder are great aesthetics, but there are a host of other lighter sidearms to choose from. It's big and it's slow, and that's kind of the point. It looks and feels powerful. I would equate it to holding something like a Desert Eagle. It just speaks for itself. The presentation here is a 10 out of 10. Let's talk field use. No leaks when loading new CO2. It has a nice, hard trigger pull that's actually pretty close to the feel of a real revolver. I got around 360 FPS with fresh CO2, and I saw a steady decline as testing continued. Consistency is nothing to write home about, with each shot fluctuating by 5 to 7 FPS. You'll be able to squeeze out around 100 shots per cartridge, with your FPS evening out to around 330 during consistent use. I had a lot of problems with accuracy. I could keep shots on target at around 10 yards, but past that, shots were going directly into the air. That told me that my hop-up unit was either broken or jammed. But after tightening a screw in the barrel assembly and applying some lubricant, I saw a dramatic increase in accuracy out to around 20 yards. However, inconsistencies were still present throughout testing. At its best, the Rhino delivers average accuracy can put shots on or around where you're aiming, but at its worst, its hop-up system makes it unreliable. And that is a severe shortcoming when it comes to practical field use. As always, I encourage you to do your research, watch other reviews, and make sure you know what you're buying. At $160, you want to make sure you're getting something that works. If we're talking about practicality on the airsoft field, we need to talk about the function of a sidearm. A sidearm is a supplement for your primary weapon. If your main replica goes down or you're out of ammo and need to engage an enemy player, you can reach for your sidearm, engage, and hopefully survive the encounter. Now, of course, because handguns have a smaller profile than rifle platforms, they're much more maneuverable indoors. For indoor gameplay, airsoft handguns can viably be used as a primary, provided you have the gear and play style to back it up. So, when choosing a practical sidearm for your airsoft loadout, you want something that's quick to deploy, maneuverable, and something that has enough capacity to take down an enemy player before they do the same to you. If that's what we're looking for, this is just not it. I know. Cool factor aside, and this thing is really cool, it has some major field use problems that plague most airsoft six shooters. The biggest one is capacity. Six shots versus 25. On the airsoft field, that's a big difference. Let's look at this comparison between my ASG P09 and the Rhino. So, in the time it took me to fire six shots, reload, and fire again with the P09, I wasn't even close to getting the Rhino back up and running. In a close range, panic situation where both people have their guns up, the person who puts out the most plastic is going to win. That's just the way it is. The other thing we have to talk about is gear carriage. How are we carrying around our extra ammo? Magazines are way easier to store and retrieve than revolver shells. So the obvious solution is speed loaders, right? Well, that's definitely better than carrying a bunch of loose shells around in your pockets, but I just don't see slotting six individual shells into a cylinder being faster than slotting one magazine into a magwell. Okay, so it has an accessory rail. And while I don't find tactical lasers particularly effective attachments, you could attach a weapon light. But look at the frame. It's huge. We've got to consider fitting this thing into a holster and the weight and size that it takes up on our kit. A big awkward hand cannon isn't very fast. And we should talk about the platform itself. It's quite a bit heavier than your average automatic. And remember the potential mechanical issues with the hop-up. With a $160 price tag, we're paying more for the official trades, the beautiful finish, and the quality materials. 
less for field performance. Just in reviewing this, I dropped it, I scuffed up the grips, and I chipped off some of the finish. If you take this out onto the field, it's gonna get beat up. And that's a crying shame, because it's just so gorgeous to look at. Practicality takes no prisoners. But practicality is boring. And if you want to take a giant space age hand cannon out onto the field, don't let anybody stop you. This is the mighty right hand of intergalactic bounty hunters and cyberpunk detectives. And it might be the perfect sidearm to put the finishing touch on your airsoft loadout. You're talking to the guy that carries around that beast. That's the least practical airsoft gun ever created. But I don't carry it around because it's effective. I carry it around because it's cool. The same principle applies here. So. Let's talk about how to make this thing as competitive as possible if you absolutely have to take it out. You'll need to suit yourself up with some of the bare essentials. First, you're going to get yourself a belt. The thinner, the better, because you're going to attach these to it. These are belt-mounted speed loader pouches. They're very affordable and they usually come in sets of two. And then I've got two words for you. Speed loaders. You're going to need a lot of these, three or four, and enough wind gun revolver shells to fill up all of them and your rhino. I'd suggest buying an extra pack of these just to leave at home because you're going to need to replace the ones that you lose on the field, and you will lose them on the field. Get all your shells loaded up before the game and tucked into your belt pouches. And don't forget a dump pouch because you can't index shells like you can do with magazines. When you reload, dump your shells into your hand, throw them in your dump pouch, and retrieve your speed loader. After you're loaded up, throw your speed loader in your dump pouch, and you're good to go. Now let's talk about play style. In spite of the hop-up issues I experienced with my model, I do think it has the potential to engage targets at longer distances, especially if you load it with heavier ammo like .30s. Presumably, you're going to be using your primary for most of the game, so I'd only deploy this if you have a target dead to rights. In full view, not behind cover, and at a reasonable engagement distance. It's more of a signature weapon at that point, something you've just used for the heck of it. But when you line up your target and pull that trigger, seeing them yell hit is gonna be all the more satisfying. An imposing sidearm for the discerning soldier of fortune. The Kiapa Rhino by Black Ops Manufacture is a well-crafted scale replica of its real-world counterpart. At $160, you get an attractive airsoft pistol with solid externals and a beautiful finish. This airsoft handgun over-delivers in the looks and feels department. Unfortunately, like other airsoft six-shooters, it's simply outclassed by a host of affordable mag-fed airsoft pistols. The cool features that make the real-world revolver so interesting don't really add much of a tactical advantage on the airsoft field. Along with a potentially finicky hop-up unit, I think this one is best suited for collectors. However, for all of those space cowboys out there who absolutely need something to strike fear in the hearts of their enemies, you can make it work with the right equipment. Familiarize yourself with your gear, stay in the fight, stay corporate approved. Magazines are way easier to store and retrieve than revolver shells. <laughs> this is an accident, but that was actually kind of that actually kind of made sense. <laughs>